everybody, this is AYG's Alpha Team, here with another video for The Division. This is going to be the video for my Tactician's Authority build after 1.6. Now the RNG gods weren't 100% kind to me, so I do have some compromises that I had to make. But this is the best I got within 8 days of grinding. Let's go over it. It's going to be a 4 part Tactician with a 2 part high end. I was going to go a 3 part Tactician, but why would I do that when you need to get the full tactics built to get the most benefits from it so we're going to do that running a vigorous chess piece and inventive backpack we'll go over those in a second the reason we're going with vigorous is because it, it grants overheal to all healing skills and when you're running a skill power build you want as much toughness as you can get and this is just super helpful and because we're running inventive we want to stay at full health as often as possible so that's how we're going with this. We're also running health. Enemy armor damage could be something else. It's really just your call. Next is the mask. This is one of the times where your major attributes can be skill power because there is no health option. So we're rolling for skill power here. Every one of the pieces of armor I have are going to have electronics on them. We also got burn resistance as a miner, which is good. Tech knee pads, also electronics. This is one of the instances where you could roll for health or skill power, but you should always roll for health. You want to get your toughness around 300 at least, to, so that way you can stay competitive during gunfights. Uh, backpack is inventive. Increase skill power of 15% when you're at full health. This is super beneficial for getting the most out of your skills. Another attribute time where you could roll for health or skill power, and we're rolling for health again, like I said. We're going to get a ton of skill power out of this build, so we don't really have to roll too much for it. Mods, all the mods with the exception of this one, firearms, skill power, all of them are going to be electronic skill power. And all of my performance mods are seeker mind damage and we'll go over that in a second too. Now the reason I need that firearms mod is for my talents and my weapons. This is the gloves. Major attributes are perfect. Critical to chance, skill haste, and health on kill. We're going with critical to chance because we will be using a submachine gun. And the holster, this is one of the compromises I had to make. The roll is just awful for firearm stamina and electronics, but it works for what we got. And since I've been trying for like eight days to get a better one, it just wasn't happening, so we're just going to have to go with this. Another attribute for health. And like I said, we're running that vigorous with, with the chest piece because of that overheal. We want to make sure we're staying alive as often as possible. All right, weapons of choice are going to be enhanced PP-19, LVOAC, and Navy MP-5. And competent and talented are going to be the two major talents we're going to have. As you can see, you need 2874 firearms, and that's why I have that one firearms mod. So I can unlock those talents. And before I forget, tacticians, two part is 15% skill haste, three parts 10 percent skill power and then of course the every bullet in your group hit enemies with adds 0.2 percent skill power for a max of 30 that will come in handy when you're ever you're doing pvp with a group or if you're doing the last stand you're always going to be in a group it comes in handy more often than not with all the skill power boosts you get you can get well over 500 skill power now even though the game cap is 450 this way you always have an option to get the max out of your skill power build and my enhanced PP-19 is rolled for critical hit damage and critical hit chance, mostly damage though. And a little bit of rate of fire. LVOAC is going to be headshot damage, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. A little bit of stability, just so I can get a little better on the long distance shooting that I have to do. Overall, the game, the mods are really up to you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Same with the weapons, your weapons of choice. You want to do as much DPS as you can, but also you want to have some lasting DPS too. That's why I'm rolling the Enhanced PV-19. Responsive on this LVOAC. Always good. Alright, let's go over some attributes here. Critical chance is about 30% on my PP-19. Reload time is good. It's going to scroll through these so you can check them out. Health on kill. Now, damage to elites will only really be effective in your PvE experiences, but it is still good. Skill haste, we get 23% mostly from our actual tactician build. Super helpful. Get those skills back as soon as possible. Less than 20 seconds for both of the talents we'll be using. We'll go over that in a sec, or skills rather. 
And 33% burn resistance. Also very good. Since we'll be coming across burn a lot, that's what we want to get the most resistance for. Now skills, I'm going with the first aid defibrillator and the Seeker Mind Airburst. Now I tried all of the Seeker Minds, including the base version, and this one does the most damage. Now the base version says it does 537 right here, but it doesn't, it just doesn't. Like every time I use it, it's just not as effective. So that's why we're going with Airburst. The clusters, I wouldn't recommend just because you don't get as much damage per opponent out of them. So definitely go with the Airburst. And the defibrillator has the quickest cooldown and also has the most ally heal. So that's why we're going with that one, because we will be working in teams in the last stand. And the more ally heal you get from this particular talent that we're going to go over, triage, the better. Because you want to heal your allies because they're going to help skill your skill cooldown. We're also rolling combat medic to help our allies as well. Wildfire, since we're using air burst and they do burn your opponents. And also we want to use chain reaction to get the more get even more damage out of our explosives now let's get into some gameplay there are a couple of good rules you want to follow when you're doing this build one of them is first and foremost is you have to stay alive your secret mind cannot do damage if you're dead so you can see right here I'm gonna toss the secret mine out but then I start taking some serious damage, and I know my secret mind won't be able to kill them if I'm down. I'll quickly get out of cover, let it do its work. This next one, I try to shoot my heal at this at one of my teammates, and it just I just failed. So this guy is right behind here. I'm a terrible shot with this gun. If I make sure I dodge all the bullets, let my secret mind do its work. Down he goes. The secret mine is devastating with the one on ones. Now, this scenario, you can see in the distance, there's enemies there, and one of them sees me, starts his firing. Pop my med kit, take some good cover, get my secret mine out there. Now, the whole idea is I want to stay alive so the secret mine can do its damage. There it goes. Down he goes. It's going to be the, it's going to be the thing that does the most damage between that and your weapons. Secret Mind is going to be doing most of the work. Another rule is if you did you ever see Jurassic Park in that part where the Australian guy is hunting the Velociraptor and the other ones come from the sides and kill him? I like to call that being clever girl. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to their attention is elsewhere. We come from behind, light them up, take one down. Now this guy stays alive, but now he's concentrated on me, so he's going to get clever grilled by the guys behind him again. Buddy spawn is up and running. Overwhelmed, take him down. I love being I love it being called clever girl. Just another word for flank. Flanking is huge. I mean clever girling rather is huge when you're using the seeker mind. Just because most people don't expect it and it's so devastating that it will take opponents down. Here's another instance. Where this group is fighting with guys in front of them, being the guy that just come up, both throw our secret mines. They get devastated. Huge benefit when they're, when they're not already shooting at you. That's why the clever girl is awesome. One minute until tactical boots are Here's another instance. Coming up on a group. Now another thing to point out here is I see the group ahead of time. Now, if I started shooting, I would draw their attention. So I don't want to draw their attention, especially if there's other allies in the area. Let them focus on them. That way I can get my secret mind out. Hit them when they're not paying attention. From the other agent you didn't even know was there. Alright, next rule is Seekers Seek. Now what I mean is, you can throw one out and let it cover you while you're doing other objectives, like capturing this point B3. I throw it out, I know there's guys over there. This way I know I'm getting covered while I'm doing my objective. You can see it right here, take down two of them. It does a great job of just getting your back when you're busy. 
same instance here. B1 needs to be taken. There's tons of enemies. I know like most of my teammates in this scenario weren't really capturing the points, so I know I was just gonna be up to me. Seeker mine out, start capturing, let it do the work. Down. Like I said, in this build too, you can run point or you can run backup. Both of them are super effective. Here's another instance. I put Seeker Mine down. You can see how the right below me there's a glowing green. That means my Seeker Mine's out. It's not finding anyone. That's just good news for me. Cap the point. Now my objective is to go close enough to enemies so my Seeker Mine will go after them. I know there's some down in the tunnel. I just get close enough, capture them, move out, let it do the work. Triple kill just from Seeker Mine. Now the rest of these shots are just going to be body flying. There's a bunch of them right there. You can see that Seeker Mine does some devastating damage and the bodies just fly sometimes and it's hilarious. I got a couple more here that you guys can check out. That's going to do it for this Tactician's Authority build, guys. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to see more from RU Gaming. Choose to comment if you have any questions, too. Comments are always appreciated and feedback. I'm going to try and do a video for all the builds that I like. So far, we've got a few in there. I'll leave some timestamps in the description as well. So if you want to just jump to the gameplay, you can. But again, thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead. Game on. Game on! Yeah, game on!